In the midst of Confederate-held East Tennessee, a motley band of Union sympathizers carried out one of the most daring operations in enemy territory of the Civil War. This group successfully burned vital bridges across East Tennessee, but many were caught and executed. To add insult to injury, the Union Army failed to keep their word. Our story begins in 1861. Most of the South held firm for the Confederacy. Contrary to popular belief, East Tennessee was massively in favor of remaining with the Union, and it stayed that way throughout the war. Appalachians especially were against secession. The reason why East Tennesseans weren't keen on leaving the Union was simply because slavery didn't play a large role in East Tennessee. Combine that with the fact that the state government had been treating the area poorly in recent years, and you can see why the region was massively Union. The state of Tennessee would vote to secede from the Union on June 8, 1861, but over 66% of East Tennesseans refused to comply and declared their intentions to remain with the Union. There were even legitimate talks of voting to allow East Tennessee to become its own state so they could decide for themselves who they wanted to fight for. Obviously, the state legislature rejected this and sent Confederate troops to occupy East Tennessee. As you might have learned in school, railroads were vitally important during the Civil War. East Tennessee was a vital nexus of railroads that each side needed to maintain control of to win the war. East Tennessee, and specifically Knoxville, was the gateway to the South. At the time, East Tennessee and Georgia and the East Tennessee and Virginia railroads were most important to the Confederacy because controlling the two would allow the Confederacy to own a logistical connection between the Deep South and Virginia. If they didn't have control of these rail lines, then they would be forced to go around the Appalachian Mountains, which is a task no army could handle in a sufficient amount of time. Since the railroads the Confederacy needed were surrounded by Union sympathizers, politicians began to fear what the local population could do. One Confederate politician was quoted as saying, quote, I'm looking to hear that the bridges have been burned and the East Tennessee and Virginia Railroad torn up. After the petition to make East Tennessee an independent state failed, Reverend William Blunt Carter would travel to Camp Dick Robinson in Kentucky to relay a secret plan to the Union leaders. Many East Tennesseans actually fled to Camp Dick Robinson to enlist in the Army, so on the surface, his trip seemed benign. While at the camp, he would meet with three generals, General George H. Thomas, General William T. Sherman, and the Reverend's brother, General Samuel P. Carter. Reverend William Blunt Carter laid out his plan to attack nine vital bridges along the rail lines in East Tennessee. These bridges would be burned down and devastate the Confederacy's ability to transport anything. It would essentially cut off Virginia from the rest of the Confederacy. The key to the plan, however, was that the Union would need to immediately invade after the burnings so that the Confederacy wouldn't be able to repair the railroads and bridges. After their conversation, Thomas and Sherman were on board. Now all Reverend Carter needed to do was to present his plan to the Commander-in-Chief, President Lincoln. So Reverend Carter traveled to Washington, D.C. to meet with Lincoln armed with a letter from General Thomas outlining his advocacy for Carter's plan. While in D.C., Carter met with President Lincoln, General McClellan, and Secretary of State William Seward. Lincoln eventually agreed to divert funds for Carter's plan, but it seems like he did it to pacify Senator Andrew Johnson and Congressman Horace Maynard's pressure to help Unionists in East Tennessee. So the Reverend was now headed back to Camp Dick Robinson, to start planning for the East Tennessee bridge burnings. In total, there were nine bridges that Carter's plan would target. In a list from northeast to southwest, the list included bridges at the Holston River, Watauga River, Lick Creek, Strawberry Plains, Tennessee River, Hawassi River, Chickamauga Creek, and Bridgeport in Alabama. The majority of these bridges were on the East Tennessee Railroads, which would destroy one of the most important ways of transport and connection for the Confederacy. In October of 1861, 
Reverend Carter would set up his command post in Kingston, Tennessee. With him were Captains David Fry and William Cross, who were tasked with destroying the Lick Creek and Loudon Bridges, Alfred Cate, who was tasked with destroying the bridges in southeast Tennessee, and Daniel Stover, who was supposed to destroy the bridges in northeast Tennessee. Finally, to destroy the bridge in Strawberry Plains, he recruited a former Sevier County Sheriff, William C. Pickens. Each one of these men was considered a lieutenant by Reverend Carter. Each of these lieutenants was tasked with recruiting their own teams in the region that they were assigned to destroy each bridge in. As Reverend Carter finished his plans, Union forces were preparing to march south to Knoxville to invade on the hind end of the attacks. But as things do in war, the situation changed drastically. After a raid in into Kentucky by Confederates and more raids on the western side of the Union lines, General Sherman became concerned that the Union forces were spread too thin. Despite General Thomas's pleas, Sherman called off the invasion into East Tennessee on November 7, 1861. Reverend Carter and his men never got word of this decision to call off their backup after the burnings, so they continued on with their mission the next night, November 8. The first two bridges to go down were the ones at Chickamauga Creek and Hawassi, as they had virtually no guards on duty. They burned quickly. The bridges at Bridgeport, Loudoun, and Watauga were guarded by massive Confederate forces, and this simple show of force caused the men to desert and refuse to try to take the bridges. The Lick Creek and Union bridges were guarded by only a couple of Confederates, so the attackers were easily able to kill them and burn the bridges. At the Strawberry Plains Bridge, Pickens and his men found one Confederate guard. Pickens tried to light his torch in secret, but was spotted by the sole soldier. Pickens attacked the soldier, and by the end of it, both parties were injured, but the Confederate fled into the night, leaving the bridge unprotected. In a scene reminiscent of a Hollywood movie, Pickens lost the group's matches during his fight, so the group had to abort the mission because they couldn't light the bridge on fire. Even though the attack on the East Tennessee bridges was a middling success, it deeply concerned all the Confederate leaders. They were in panic mode. Immediately after the attacks, embellished reports of Union activity in the region were overreported. Confederate District Attorney J.C. Ramsey declared that he would hang anyone involved, and then Confederate leaders in the region were ordered to begin rounding up potential Unionists. The thing is, the Confederates weren't just rounding up Unionist loyalists, but anyone they wanted to without cause. Next, the Confederate War Secretary, Judah P. Benjamin, issued an order to bring those involved in the bridge burnings to justice. At first, they found five of the men directly involved in the attacks and hung them on the spot. Those who had taken part in the attacks indirectly were to be detained. All in all, they found and detained nine more men involved, including the father of William Pickens, who was named Samuel Pickens, and a former editor of the Knoxville Register, John Fleming. Interestingly, Confederate Judge West Humphreys threw out many of the cases due to a lack of evidence. Enraged by this decision, Confederate military leaders suspended habeas corpus and instituted martial law. Five more members of the attacks were then hanged. Those who were not directly involved, including Samuel Pickens, William, William Pickens' father, were imprisoned in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Over 150 people were arrested and jailed over the attacks, and several of them died in the Alabama prison. After the bridge burnings, Reverend Carter came back to Kentucky to double down on the Union Army invading East Tennessee. It took another two years before the Union would finally invade with General Ambrose Burnside at the helm. Knoxville was never controlled by the Confederacy again, as the city was well defended by the Union, and the rest of East Tennesseans who were being terrorized went back to their normal lives. Reverend Carter never revealed any of the men who were part of the bridge burnings that night. He kept his secret even after the war was over. Because of this, we don't entirely know who all participated in the attacks. However, a small list of the names of the attackers was released 
when they petitioned the federal government for compensation for their heroic actions that night. In 2002, a monument was erected to honor five of the bridge burners who were hanged by the Confederacy for destroying the Lick Creek Bridge.